Hello, welcome to this blog on burnout. I'm Naseem Chatiwala, physical therapist and also a course developer and course instructor with Summit Education Professionals for their stroke recovery and vestibular rehab courses. So let's talk about burnout today. So what is burnout? Burnout is a psychological disorder in response to prolonged exposure to which kind of brings up your interpersonal stressors at the job. So initially burnout was thought to be a mere psychological problem coming from depression. But we all know there is a lot more to it than just a psychological phenomena. And so there was a lot of research that looked at industrial organization psychology and that brought in this whole big culture about job stressors, the attitudes and the behaviors at job that could lead us to have this burnout. So the burnout is a three step process. We have job stressors. So that is where we have increased job demands and we don't have enough resources. And then it's also based on the individual strain. So it is your emotional response to exhaustion because we all deal with exhaustion a little bit differently. And so it really depends on how you are dealing with that exhaustion. And then that brings us uh, just a different animal in us. It brings us defensive coping mechanism where our attitudes change, our behavior change. And sometimes we're like, I usually would not have coped that way. But this is, again, it's a snowball effect. It's because of that job demand, because of that exhaustion. And now you are trying to cope with it a little bit differently than what you would have done uh, under other circumstances. So it's a three-dimensional uh, problem where you start with that emotional exhaustion. So I think the first symptom or the first uh, preceding thing that happens with, for a full burnout is where you have emotional exhaustion. Uh, again, same thing. Uh, you have more job demands and less resources. Now, this leads us into this feeling of cynicism. And cynicism is where you feel detachment from a job. You feel um, your behaviors or your attitudes are different to your clients. There is a lot of inappropriateness there. Uh, that is this whole uh, morale comes down a little bit. Uh, your idealism is lost and we go through this process of withdrawal. And that leads us to decreased self-efficacy. Uh, where we feel lack of accomplishment and again we have uh, our withdrawal kicks in and we don't want to we don't see ourselves doing the best we could be doing so how do we recognize burnout so there was this there's a big debate that's going on even right now is in terms of engaged employees do they have burnout and most people will say engaged employees do not have burnout because they're invested into it they're absorbed in their job. They have that dedication towards that job. They're engaged in that job performance. Um, but the debate or the other side of it is engaged employees put in a lot more effort while they're trying to get that job done. So they could also be going through a burnout in a different way. But some of the symptoms of recognizing uh, burnout are uh, extreme fatigue every single day, um, long-standing gastrointestinal disorders. These are the people who may just have upset stomach, they may have diarrhea, but it's a long-standing gastrointestinal issues. Uh, we do say that things start in your gut and I'm a big believer of that. So definitely want to address that. Uh, any kind of muscle tension, tightness, pain, headaches. Headaches is one of the most common phenomena. Uh, hypertension, cold flu, like episodes, again, long standing, don't get better. Or if they do get better, then you kind of rebound back to those symptoms again. Uh, sleep disturbances, falling asleep, staying asleep, uh, depression, anxiety, irritability. And again, there is some connection of this psychological mental health to burnout, but you could see this more increased if you're going through a burnout. Uh, substance abuse and then sadly societal ideations. Now, what are the consequences of burnout, right? So we have consequences of burnout on a personal level, a social level, but also in terms of professional level. And there has been report of increased number of medical errors uh, when your staff has burnout, uh, leads to poor quality of care. We are not doing the best we can. And then that also leads to low ratings in the clinical satisfaction. 
how do we assess burnout? So there are many different ways and different forms are, um, to assess uh, burnout. But any of these, they really look at three dimensions. So basically, they're looking at emotional fatigue. They're looking at personal fulfillment and then depersonalization. So these are the main three domains uh, which the assessment tools look. An interesting way for looking at a uh, burnout was given by the Spanish um, outcome measure. And they looked at guilt. And they also looked at enthusiasm because they felt uh, enthusiasm and guilt also added to figuring out if somebody is going through burnout or not at workplace. Now, how do we address burnout? So you can address burnout in three different ways. Uh, but as we say, you know, when we're treating our patients, we are all healthcare professionals and we always say holistic approach because I'm a physical therapist and if somebody with concussion comes for physical therapy, if I only address physical therapy part of the domain and we don't have this interdisciplinary approach of uh, occupational therapy, speech therapy, nursing or uh, medical provider. So if it's not holistic, then my patient's outcome are not going to be the best because physical therapy is only one part of the problem. Similarly, individual is only one part of the problem we need to address them in terms of the team and the organization as well. Uh, so when a burnout is going through, an individual usually feels like, okay, I need to do something. I may take a break. I can do meditation. I can get medications. But if you only address individually and not the systems approach, we cannot address burnout because burnout stems from organization, the demands of the job, lack of resources from the job, uh, control of the job, meaning do you have autonomy to make decisions? That's a big thing. Uh, the literature has talked about if you give control to your employees, if you have them participate in decision-making process, then they have that autonomy and that burnout reduces. So how can we address burnout at the level of team and organization? So at the level of organization, there are a couple of things that we could do, and that's job crafting. I love the word crafting because crafting to me talks creativity. And that's what it is about, is we have to be creative in terms of how we can blend the job demands with the available resources. Because the story of all our lives is we don't have enough resources, and our demands of job keep increasing by the day. So we have to be very creative in terms of how can we blend this gap and how can we reduce the burnout or stress that we all have. So task crafting is where we really look at the job demands. We look at all the tasks out there and we also look at the ratio of our employees and then distribute it so that not one employee gets the burn of this all task. So task crafting is really creative ways at looking at task distribution. Relation crafting, that's another big key, especially when you're working as a team, because we all know that some people we work really well with, but then there are other people where for some reason, it's not anything about they're not invested or they're not engaged. It's just that we don't match in terms of working together. That's okay. It's respecting mutually. But I think recognizing them and knowing whom you work well with and whom you don't work well with, then that really helps you form your team. And if you are really happy working with the people that you like, then that engagement increases and the burnout reduces. Cognitive crafting is the way the organization or the team, the way they work, is they give you a purpose. There is a vision. There is a meaning to the task. Because if we have a purpose, like when we are treating our patients, right, we're always thinking about rationales. We're trying to teach our patient why we are doing something and what it's going to be helpful for. Because same way, if the patient gets invested in why we are doing it and what we're doing, they do better. Cognitive crafting is the same neuroplasticity principle. It's a salience. We need to know the importance of this. Now, individually, there are a lot of things that you can do at the individual level to uh, um, address the burnout. Uh, first thing is positive psychology. You have to think positively. Engagement, meaning accomplishment. We need to stop focusing on negatives because if we are doing a task and the demands are very high, 
and sometimes we hit a roadblock and that's when the stressors really increase so if we start emphasizing on the positivity we may be having a journal um, there was this one literature report which talked about uh, emergency room physicians they had a journal and they would just write down everything positive they did in a day uh, there was this appreciation gratitude and if they had that big journal or a log they tended to do better than the physicians who did not have that. So simple things. Uh, maybe at the end of the day, I always have this quick talk to myself for two minutes and I reflect on my day and say, okay, what is the good I did today? What were the things that really worked? Because again, that positivity really helps you carry over to the next day. And one big thing is don't be too hard on yourself. I think we all want to be type A's. We want to do everything perfect. Uh, we want our patients to be perfect. We want to make sure that our work is perfect. Uh, and in that perfection, sometimes we really get into the cyclone effect and those stresses kick in. And before you know it, there's this whole big area of burnout. So be easy on yourself. Another thing is a mindset. So the positive psychology, I think, also has to do with your mindset. And we have two different kinds of mindset. And Carol Dweck, uh, she is a guru of this mindset. Her book is very well known. But what she talks about is, it's a continuum of mindset. So on one side, you have a fixed mindset where things are the way they are. They cannot improve. They have to be done this way. And there is no flexibility in changing that. And then the growth mindset on the other end of the continuum is where everything is changing. If things don't go well this way, we have another way to address it. And it is said in the literature that people with growth mindset, they learn more, they challenge themselves more, and they're able to overcome barriers more easily. So we really need to start thinking in that growth mindset. And this growth mindset is where you're also thinking about is, if you made a mistake at work, how do you deal with that? If a boss comes and gives you some feedback, how do you deal with that? Do you become defensive? Do you try to cover it up? Or are you more open to talk about your mistakes? Because if you are more open to talk about your mistakes, that's when that creativity, that learning, that acceptance to challenge comes in because we all make mistakes and we all are learning every single day. I make it a point that I always tell myself is I have to learn one new thing a day. So we really need to have the growth mindset. The positive psychology also is about taking break, breathe, reflect. I know we breathe in how many ever times in a day, right? But how many times do we pause and really think about that breath that goes into our lungs and how it replenishes all our systems in the body? So we really need to reflect on that and enjoy that moment. Uh, that's what meditation is about. So we really, I would really encourage uh, five minutes a day. It doesn't take long to do that meditation. But for five minutes, if you just find a quiet spot, close your eyes and reflect on the day and just breathe in and pay your attention or focus bringing into your body because your body comes first. Now, the advice of just take a break and rest, does that help? So studies have shown is just if you were working in the stressful environment, stressful situation, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm going to just go walk outside, take a break. And then when you come back to your stress, full job, the stress is still there. So you come right back and get sucked into it. So instead, the studies have shown or recommended that when you take a break, learn something new. It can be anything. It could be reading an article. But if you kind of think about it is I'm going to learn something new in that five minute break I'm taking. What the research has shown is you start getting recruiting new neurofibers in your brain and the neurochemicals change. And so when you now come back to your leftover tasks, your creativity increases and you're able to think with a clear mind and address that problem in a different way. So really recommend if you can take a break and learn something new. Also, the mindset of challenges that are thrown to you, think about that challenge as an opportunity to engage others and solving a problem. So again, if you kind of have that cognitive crafting and if you think your attitude 
towards that job or task, possibly that engagement of yours with that job is going to get better. Green space. I think we all know the advantages of us just being in green greenery. So outside in the park, again, five minute walk, 10 minute walk. If you don't want to walk, just go and sit outside. Now, I live in New England. So for me in winter months, that's very hard, but I still make it a point of dressing up really appropriately and going out to get that fresh air. It really helps us. And then lastly, smile often and laugh a lot. And we all know laughter is the best medicine, right? So there is some clubs called laughing club. And all you do is you go out there and you laugh as loudly as you can. And there has been evidence-based research which has shown that laughter does help us reduce our stress. So I would really encourage you to smile often and laugh a lot. So with this, I want to thank you for listening. And just want to leave you with this is obstacles come day to day in our lives. And we don't want to get stuck and have that fixed mindset versus we want to think it creatively and clarity. And we want to just find different options on how we can come out of that obstacle. Thank you.